Well, there isn't much that I've been putting in front of this campaign so far this year, as you've probably seen. You know, the, uh, the campaign that, that the Crazy Park has taken uh, a lot of my time and a lot of my effort. And in fact, uh, anyone that chases the odd big carp along the way will know that it can be quite a selfish obsession. You know, things that need priority often get put to one side uh, while you focus on the task in hand of trying to catch a couple of carp, which is crazy when you try to put it in context. But um, yeah, we're all mad carp fishermen and you, uh, I'm sure many of you can relate to what I'm saying there. But there's one thing that I will never put in front of my carp fishing and that's this little fella. And uh, today I uh, unfortunately have got to take him to the vets and I'm slightly concerned, more than slightly concerned, I'm petrified about it really because he has been my companion for the best part of 15 years um, and little does he know just how much of a companion he's been, you know, he's been there through some of my toughest times I guess in the last 15 years um, and when I reflect back I think, you know, 15 years is a long time nothing lasts forever and just like those crazy park carp um, I guess you could say this little chap is in the last sort of phase of his life maybe but um, yeah he's helped me unbeknown to him through some of my most troubled times over the last 15 years in fact uh, I've lost my dad and my mum in the last 15 years and little does he know just how much he's helped me through some of those troubled times just by being the most committed dog I've ever had. You know, he shows unconditional love. He's the first person I see when I get up in the morning. He's the last little face I see uh, before I settle in for the evening. And uh, yeah, he's there when I come home from work. He's waiting for me by the door. And uh, anyone that owns a dog will be able to relate because, you know, when you go through some stressful times in your life, these, uh, these fur babies here are the most incredible, intuitive animals just for comfort in you at times when you really need it. Um, and today, I, uh, it breaks my heart really to have to take him down to the vets because he's got a growth on his foot. Um, I've owned dogs all my life and I must admit this growth looks a little bit suspicious and um, I'm petrified really because uh, it looks to me uh, from, from, from an initial sort of glance that it looks like it could be some sort of cancerous growth. Um, I'm fingers crossed it's not and uh, yeah I'm not too sure but you know the first portal call is to take him to the vets. I'm sure they'll take uh, a little biopsy, test it and do all the usual protocols but um, for the time being um, yeah that's, that's, that's what I'm going to be doing. Fishing, I'm going to have to sort of park fishing for a minute because uh, this chap is my number one priority, nearly. And uh, little does he know, I'm just about to take him to the vets, because look, I'm looking at him and he's falling asleep. And uh, yeah, the last time I took him to the vets, <laughs> he decided to take a massive crap on the middle of the vets floor. So I'm hoping not for a repeat performance, but uh, fingers crossed, it's with a heavy heart, I have to take him to the vets and uh, yeah, probably get his foot looked at because uh, yeah, the last thing I would ever want is for him to be in any sort of pain and as you can see, he's looking pretty sorry for himself. So uh, yeah, do you want to go to the vets? Yeah? I doubt that, you just think that you're going for a walk. Uh, he's partially deaf so uh, he definitely can't hear the vets. So uh, yeah, do you want to go to the vets? Come on then. <laughs> right, I'm going to turn off because, uh, yeah, it's never a beautiful experience taking a dog to the vets and especially getting him through the doors. But uh, I'll check back in when I've got some more news. But for the time being, no pre-baiting tonight because this little chap just here is, uh, yeah, needs some attention. Well, as you can see, I'm back on the bank. Not for long, so I've got to pack up for work in a minute. I'm just going to finish my last cup of coffee of the morning. Um, but I've just experienced what I can only describe of a night of completely contrasting two different halves. Um, a good friend Ben popped in last night uh, to celebrate last week's capture of that lovely mirror, you know, that lovely big mirror, that 41 pound mirror that actually at the moment is the peak of my campaign and I'm still absolutely grinning from ear to ear at that capture. Tell down just a smidgen, that's it. So Ben dropped in last night with a pizza from uh, just up the road and they are absolutely delicious. Oh Ben, let's have a look. 
These are the best pizzas money can buy. Highly recommended. <laughs> oh yes. That is about as good as it gets for the bank side. Mate, I ain't gonna hold out any longer. I'm starving. Let's eat. Good old Ben, he pops in every now and again on his travels with some uh, culinary delights for me to, uh, to sample. We chew the fat and uh, just as it was getting dark, I actually had a small common, which is uh, another good sign that the area is still rocking after last week's pre-baiting. But then as I settled in for the evening, you know, the, the park went nice and quiet, I had that little moment that I've described previously, you get an hour of bliss here um, when everyone sort of goes home and uh, you just get the park to yourself and it actually feels like a normal carp lake. You know, all the wildlife comes alive and uh, you just get that little moment where you think, this is, uh, this is idyllic, but it never lasts for long because um, at about, what time must it have been? About half past 10, quarter to 11, the rod's ripped off again and I've got another one which is, uh, Sadly, this time it was a repeat capture of that little scaly one with half a tail that I had a couple of weeks back. But beggars can't be choosers. It's proved to me that actually this area is absolutely rocking. And uh, it's been incredible. You know, I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd be catching as many carp as I'm catching right now. I kind of set my stall at the start of the year to get one bite from the crazy park. Uh, and like any campaign, if you get one bite, you can work off it. And uh, yeah, it just seems this area just keeps on giving. Uh, the key to it, as I've said before, is the baiting that I'm putting in. I'm putting bait in every day, just a little small, about half a kilo every day on my way to work. Um, and I think the regularity is, is absolutely the key. And another thing, nobody's been here. Nobody's fished this area. Um, but I guess I'm, I'm a bit concerned because if anyone walks the park at the time that I'm walking, I haven't seen many people, I must admit, they're gonna see either some crazy feeding activity or a couple of carps or shuffling out up to their gills, which is, uh, which is a dead giveaway. And of course, you know, I don't own a swim, they can come and fish it. So uh, yeah, I'm just a bit concerned really. And I really should be doing um, a little bit more time, but I can, you know, life constraints at the moment mean that I cannot put any more time in at the moment. But um, I nearly had to end the campaign last night. I'm smiling about it. And I guess it's a bit of a nervous smile because um, I put that fish back, nestled down and sort of got my head down at about half past 11, 12 o'clock, knowing full well I've got to go to work in a minute, typical work overnight. Uh, um, and I woke up about half past two feeling, just feeling a little bit uneasy. You know, I don't have a front on the bivvy, the rods are just there, just off to the right. And um, as I've kind of opened my eyes, I can see a shadow on the rods. Um, and I kind of, do you know when you, you just, they're not too sure what's going on. So I've sort of peered around the corner to see three guys, big burly guys with skinheads, holding cans of uh, lager, um, just looking at my rods. And uh, I've sort of, sort of shuffled out and said, uh, you know, is everything okay? And in an Eastern European accent, they asked if I was carp fishing. Um, we kind of exchanged a few words and they kind of shuffled off down the bank and sort of disappeared into the darkness. So um, yeah, a little bit nervous really. I, did, I struggled to get to sleep after that, as you can probably tell. I'm looking a bit bleary eyed, but um, yeah, I don't know what that was about. Maybe if I'd have fallen asleep and wouldn't have woken up, I would have been here talking to the camera with no rods. I don't know, but uh, yeah, so uh, definitely a night of two halves, two lovely fish, although the smaller ones, the area is still rocking. I'm gonna put some more bait in before I go to work and uh, yeah, contemplate uh, maybe a lucky escape. I've still got some rods, you know, I'm packing my rods away in a minute, which is, uh, which is a major plus. And, um, but one thing I will say is I've seen the other big male fish just come up to the wrist of its tail once and shuffle up right up to its flank on the spot and slide back down this morning. At first light, the mist was rolling off and I definitely seen that fish because I've spotted that fish on numerous occasions now around the, around the lake and the dead giveaway, A is the colour because it's dark and mahogany, but B, um, in its pelvic fin, it's got a little white sort of slice or shade on the end of the pelvic fin, maybe an old otter attack, I'm not too sure, but when I see it in the water it stands up like a sore thumb and I've seen that on the spot. So uh, sadly, 
I cannot stay. Work has uh, got lots of demands today. You know, if I could stay, there's a bloody good chance, but I've got to get back as soon as I can. And I might, I might just break my habit and actually come fishing here on the weekend. Try and avoid the park at the weekends, obviously. Sunshine and it's crazy, crazy busy. Um, but I might just come back on the weekend because I've seen the one I dearly love to have in the album and it's come right up to the wrist of its tail and up to the flank and it's clearly feeding. But as always, typical overnight, our time's gonna run out and I've got to reel them in in a minute. But uh, the next time I check in, hopefully, uh, you never know. I might have the one I dearly want to catch. Oh yeah, I'd love to have that one. But got to go to work and um, I'm gonna have to pull myself away. I'm literally running out of time. I'm stretching it to uh, half an hour later than I really should. But uh, I'll check in soon and uh, hopefully with more good news. But um, yeah, or I might not have no rods. Right, got to go to work. I'll see you in a bit. Everything happens in life for a reason. Despite my real best efforts that I've ploughed into this Carpartlet campaign so far this year, the early morning bait ups, you know, the late evening walks, all the driving, the miles that I've put in just to be there as often as I can, trying to squeeze it in between other life demands has meant that it's sort of taken its toll on me a little bit. Um, I only looked in my diary last week and I've sort of notched up about 6,000 miles now in my trusty old Honda. Uh, in search of these part lake carp um, and I must say it's gone beyond my wildest dreams. I've had 17 fish and I knew something special was about to happen. There's a fish in here, there's a couple of fish in here that uh, you know really epitomise why I'm here. They're beautiful carp and there's one especially which uh, many call the king of the park and uh, I'd seen it porpoise on the area on Thursday last week and I knew there was a little window of opportunity that hopefully that carp was gonna slip up in. Uh, it's a wily old character, it doesn't do many bites. Sometimes it goes, you know, the whole year without a capture. And uh, I really thought it was on the card. So I come back on Saturday, this weekend just gone, um, and I pulled in the car park and there was somebody in the area. Uh, for the first time since I've been fishing that area, uh, there's some rods and a bear chest set up and you know, my heart sank a little bit knowing how close I was to hopefully getting the bite that I so longed for. Um, I did a quick walk, the wind was trickling in, it looked prime. Uh, I said a hello and sort of jumped in my car and, and headed home. Slightly uh, dejected really that I knew that if I could have got in that area, maybe I was in with a really good chance of something special. Um, do you know when you get a sixth sense that you're on a carp's tail and you just think within the next bite or so, something good's gonna happen? Uh, well, that bite did happen, but unfortunately it wasn't to my rods. Um, only yesterday, which was Sunday, uh, the day after, that guy um, uh, sort of realised his own dream. He had a bite that you know, I'm sure he'll never forget and he landed a carp of epic proportions. And uh, yeah, he had his moment and uh, you know, I'm really chuffed for him. It's a real special capture and for anyone that has the pleasure of holding that carp, you know, I doff my cap and I really hope one day it's me. Uh, but for the time being, it's not. Uh, it's him and anyone that sort of follows this uh, route of big carp fishing will know that not everything goes according to plan all the time. You know, I knew I was on a bit of a roll, the bites were coming, but I can't be there all the time and I've missed out, I think, by a couple of days. But, you know, that's life. That is life and a big well done to, to the captor. And uh, uh, as I say, I give him a big, huge pat on the back. This isn't any jealousy from me. In fact, I take a bit of comfort knowing I was close. I was really close, and uh, but it just wasn't my time. So for now, uh, I thought I'd just give you a bit of a check-in to let you know what's happening, and uh, I need to come up with a bit of a plan B. I need to kind of dust myself off because it's gonna take a lot of energy to rebuild a new area maybe, uh, a new swim, put some bait into somewhere else, get somewhere else rocking, um, and right now I haven't quite decided where that's gonna be, 
uh, but I'm sure I'll get some. Uh, I'll sure I'll get some focus in the next day or two. But for now, I'm uh, I'm just going to lick my wounds a little bit. No, I was close. And the next time I check in, I'll give a bit of an update because I'm not going to give up. I've sacrificed far too much for this campaign to give up right now. Um, so the next time I check in, I'm hopefully we'll have a bit of a plan and we'll be back in the driving seat. But uh, until then, just thought I'd give a bit of an update. What do you reckon? Do you reckon we're going to catch it? I'm not too sure. What do you reckon? Yes or no? Hmm, I think he's unsure as well. Well, instead of moping around, um, feeling a bit sorry for myself, I'm gonna go fishing today at a different lake. And what's more, as you can see by these essential items in the bag, I'm taking my son. So uh, we're gonna go fishing for a night. Don't think we can fail with the superhero powers that is the Joker, essential items there. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. So I'll take my mind off it a little bit before I get back to the park. And uh, the challenge now is to get the little monkey up because he's a lazy little bugger. And with a bit of luck, you might catch a carp or two. Perfect. Well done, mate. Good cast. So read it in. Faster. Best cast yet, that was. Quick bell arm over. And then gentle on it. Then... What do they smell like, Dex? They look like dog food and they smell fishy. They look like dog food and smell fishy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I hope the carp like them, eh? Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll tie some PVA bags up and put them out in a minute. For them. Mm. Oh, lovely. Mm -hmm. Right there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're creeping up on me, You're a lucky mascot, aren't you? Mm -hmm. What have we, uh, what have we caught? Well, I'm hoping it is a carp because we come mm. carp fishing. Mm -hmm. How big is it? 38 and a half pounds. 38 and a half pounds? Mm. Well, mate, you might need all your uh, hobnob energy to help me lift this one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's enjoy your cup of tea. Yeah. Look at that. Yes. You're my lucky mascot, aren't you? Is that the best cup of tea you've ever tasted? Yeah. On the bank cup of tea? Mm. Do they taste better? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Done it wrong. Oh. <laughs> well, it feels good to be back. I'm running out of time. It's quarter to nine. The sun has dipped and uh, I'm yet to get these rods out, but it's the first night in a new area that I've decided to focus on for the late summer and the early autumn. Um, since that fish got caught down the other end of the lake, I've decided to up sticks, sort of leave that area alone and sort of focus on a brand new area, which is at the totally opposite end of the lake. This is the deeper end of the lake and um, it's got a little bit of autumn form from what I can gather. Not only that, it's got everything a carp wants at this time of year. It gets the late evening sun, so the last rays of the sun are up here. It's got some big beds of weed. It's got a lovely bed of Potomagetan off to my right and a lovely snag tree down to my right also, which may cause me a few issues. Fingers crossed it doesn't, but I know the carp love to sit in there during the day and sunbathe. So the area I'm fishing is not too far out. It's between two weed beds. And in fact, it's an area that I'd already had earmarked since last year. I did a few sessions in October and November um, and through the late evening, early hours of the morning, I was hearing them out up here. So I knew if I was gonna be doing a bit of an autumn stint, this area was always on my mind. So tonight represents the first night I'm gonna put some baited rigs on the spots. The bait's been going in for weeks now um, and I've seen some feeding activity, so I can't wait. I've christened this area Dead Body Bay and for very good reason because if you remember back when uh, I had that instant with the guys looking at my rods in the early hours of the morning, luckily I've still got my rods. Um, I haven't been back since, of course, so uh, there's been no other incidents. But a few friends of mine said, Mike, 
you should look into the history of that lake because it has a bit of a, uh, a colourful past with, uh, with, with criminality. And I was like, really? They went, yeah, about 30 years ago, um, a dead body popped up where you're fishing now. And I was like, what? They went, yeah, a dead body popped up of a local criminal that was wrapped up in polythene, weighted down with rocks. I, I thought they were pulling my leg, but I did some research and looked online, and I found the original newspaper cutting from 30 years ago, where it said, yeah, this was a, this was a big murder scene in its day, so uh, not hoping for a repeat of that. I'm just here to catch a couple of carp, if I'm lucky. But um, this is Christened Dead Body Bay. It's a bit of an interesting swim. I'm up quite high. I've got a trapeze myself down the wooden, uh, the wooden steps here to a platform down there, which loads of people like to dive off in the summer. Um, but this is going to be home for the foreseeable future. The bait's been trickling in. I've seen some carp activity in the area. And tonight, hopefully, will tell me whether they're up here in the evenings, early evenings or early mornings, and I can work off that. But I'm starting again right at the first sort of step of the ladder. Um, but I'm really looking forward to what the autumn's going to bring. Uh, but for now, light is fading. Got to get these rods out and uh, sit back and uh, get some dinner. Oh, I'm absolutely starving. But right, without further ado, which one is going to be the lucky rod? I think it's going to be this one. I'll catch up with you in a bit. Well, that didn't take long. Bloody hell. And it was the lucky rod. It was the first rod I put out. That's only been out, oh, must be about an hour and a half. And it's absolutely ripped off. Unfortunately, from what I can see, let me have a look. It's the same fish. I caught, oddly, the first fish, more or less, from the, the old swim earlier on in the year. That old crusty one called the Struggler. I mean, it doesn't come out very often and it's a beautiful old carp but um yes we are off and running and that is a great sign i'm not going to get him out i don't think i'm pretty sure it's the struggler i'm just going to sort of slip him back um and get that rod out because uh yeah you never know there might be a chance of one more thanks mate well I'm in my car. I've been in my car a couple of times recording these sort of diary updates. And to be honest, it's like my mobile office. This poor old battle wagon has seen some miles in search of those crazy Park Lake carp. And um, to be honest, it's beginning to smell a little bit. It smells a bit fausty. There's, uh, I've got leads in the, uh, in the door compartment there, spare leads. I've got some spare clothes in the footwell. I've got bags of bait dotted all around the car because when I pass the park uh, usually I've got a bag of bait to put in and uh, yeah it's, it's just smelling a little bit fishy uh, I can't wait to give it a clean but hang in there because uh, I'm not cleaning him until at least the winter so uh, by that point I'm sure I'm going to grow some organic mushrooms or something it's vile in here uh, and in fact it's so bad my son's like dad I'm not getting in your car it absolutely stinks why won't you get in my car well, I have three reasons go on first it stinks Thinks of what? Bait. Bait. Mostly sent from hell. Sent from hell? <laughs> Second of all, all your rods are in there. Yeah. Third of all, it stinks of bile. Bile? Bile. Oh, what, like fausty, wet fishing stuff? Yes. Oh, no. Well, I promise, mate, I'll clean it out soon. You better. And uh, <laughs> he's right, it does. But. Uh, the journey continues and I'm just about to head up to the park once again. It's quarter to ten to put some bait in uh, and the regularity that I'm having to take these trips, I say having, I want to because this part of the adventure um, and all the pre-planning that goes into the captures that I'm having at the moment, I'm finding the most enjoyable bit. I don't know about you but you know, a lot of this you don't see. You don't see all the miles, all the effort people put in just to hold a cart, but I enjoy it. I'll be back at 12 o'clock tonight and I might get asleep by about half past 12, one o'clock. But it's a regular occurrence, it's deja vu. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm so used to it now that it doesn't really, I don't think about it. And talking about it on camera feels a bit strange because I've just made it part of my life. But it's been so hectic and I've neglected to get the camera out 
purely because I've got a bit of tunnel vision, I've got the bit between my teeth, but so much has happened. Since I caught the struggler the night where I, um, I had that repeat, that was the start of a, a, a landslide of action really up until this point. So let me try and fill in the gaps. After the struggler, I had another one, a lovely dark common, and that was quite funny because an old deer caught me in the act just while I was lifting it up for a self take. She was like, uh, can I have a look? And that was, a, that was another classic Park Lake moment. Let's get him back. Can I come down with you? Yeah, sure. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be in the way. There you go. <coughs> Time for him to go back. And then I went back the following week. I've been starting to take days off work now because I've got some holiday to use up. And uh, the days are still nice and sunny. So the fish are using this area in the day more so than the evening. So I thought I've got to book some days off. I may as well use some holiday. And that was always going to be the plan. And uh, yeah, during one of those days that I'd booked off, I had another blistering take. And this carp fights like an absolute demon. Sadly, not quite what I was after, but another part late carp to add to my tally. It's not to be sniffed at, especially with how low the stock is. Sort of sums up the park, really. A can of sort of thatchers, smashed up, thrown in the edge, no disregard for nature at all. And um, amongst that craziness, a few carp reside like this. What a yin and yang. We don't plan on catching the same carp, but in a lake with, uh, with very few in, I guess the odd repeat is inevitable. Should we get him back? Don't want to stress him out too much. He's a very, very cool carp, but as you can see, like I said last time, serious tail damage there. So I think that's it. I think I'm more or less up to date on those captures apart from a bit of a monumental 24 hours in my fishing up at the park. But it kicked off with the most strangest of occurrences. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd never expect at a carp lake or any fishery to uh, be confronted with, when I'm trying to get my rods sorted, uh, an Australian scuba diver in full scuba kit literally popped up in front of me, right in front of my rods. With, uh, with the lovely greeting of, good day, mate. You don't mind if I just scuba dive all along this ledge, do you? That's a terrible Australian accent, but that's what it sounded like. Uh, and I just didn't know what to say. I honestly didn't know what to say. I'm looking at this guy thinking, this is a wind up, like Jeremy Beadle's gonna pop out in a minute. But no, this guy's a real big deal. Um, I've now known, uh, doing a bit of research, it's called the Bondi Treasure Hunter, and he travels all around the world doing this, in lakes, rivers, canals, um, trying to find what he classes as treasure. And he had a little floating um, inflatable table with him that anything he found while he was scuba diving, he'd pop up and put it on the table. Now, unfortunately, at the crazy park, all he had was a, a table full of like three ounce zip bombs and inline leads, which he called sinkers, which made me chuckle. Um, uh, some costume jewellery and a few 20 peas and odd shrapnel. So uh, I did chuckle and uh, it did prevent me from getting my rods out where I needed to want, well, I wanted to get them out as soon as possible because the day ahead was looking like it was going to be a blissfully warm day. So uh, anyway, he moseyed on back down the marginal shelf and was carrying on his uh, treasure hunt in a bit further down. I flipped the rods out and if, if I've learned anything, uh, what I have learned is these crazy park aren't that bothered about noise, all the swimming, you know, all the boating, all the public, uh, you know, are using that lake all the time. And I've seen carp swimming around people that have been on lilos unbeknown to them. So um, I knew it wouldn't interfere too much, but I got the rods out. They went out sweet as a nut on the spots. The spots are getting so clean. The weeds sort of been pushing back and they're opening up a bit bigger. So I've got two rods on the area. And what I didn't plan for, it was a blissfully still morning, but I could see the sun peeking over. But as I say, what I didn't plan for was what was about to happen next. And the action on that day kicked off in absolute style.
Yes. Look at him. In fact, that was one of the ones I was desperately wanting to catch. I knew it was in here. It's a lovely scaly fish. And look at that, see if I have a look. I mean, look at the, look at the scales on this side. Look at the huge double plates there. Look at them, they are just incredible. Look at the size of them. Thank you. Dark, scaly, and just, just amazing. Really, really pleased with this one. Oh yes. Again, perfect mouth, absolutely stunning carp. And to catch it with the rods being in an hour, yeah. Hopefully, I've got them trained. Stunning, stunning, crazy park carp. Every now and again, the crazy park throws up a bit of a jewel, and this is one of them. Well, I've just had what I can only be described as the take from hell. It was so ferocious. In fact, it's uh, it's ripped out the stage stand on my backrests from here and uh, clean out the wood. Um, that's come tumbling into the water. Uh, rods literally launched off the pallet and um, I'm lucky to even have the front rest because as you can see, that's literally on its last thread. Oh, but. I won the battle, which is great. And um, I've got a lovely, lovely, smallish common, but it's another one of the Park Lake carp. And any Park Lake carp is a good result. So uh, yeah, wow. How I didn't lose that rod is amazing. <laughs> Let's get some stalk stuff sorted because uh, it's gonna be typically self takes. The knife is pristine. Oh, look at that. What a beautiful carp this is. And I'm really pleased because I haven't caught this one before. He looks like a brand new penny, but he's not. It's definitely an older one. But look at that. Mouth is pristine, tiny little mouth, really dark colors. And to catch two in a morning just proves the new spot in terms of the bait and approach. And uh, fish location is spot on. I'm really, really excited about the autumn. Although it is autumn already, you can see the leaves falling. So uh, it's not going to be far away and those first frosts are going to come. So yeah, I'm really happy about this one. Look at him. He is absolutely beautiful. I'm not even going to weigh him. I don't know how big he is, but I'm not going to weigh him. I'm going to get him back. But I am really, really pleased with that. Yes. Well, I need to get this rod out as soon as I can because uh, I reckon there's a chance for another one. And uh, I thought I'd just stop very briefly to talk about rigs. Uh, just to say, I, uh, I don't change anything. I keep everything consistently the same. And I have done for years. This rig probably hasn't come off my rods for as long as I can remember now. Um, it's a coated braid with a slip D, a nice big sharp hook and uh, clearly a bait that they want to eat. And I think that's the key for me. Um, as long as it's got a sharp hook, and as long as it doesn't tangle, all my energy is then focused on getting a bait out and established on the water, which allows the carp then to become greedy. Once they become greedy, this little bad boy here um, almost becomes redundant. You need a sharp hook to make sure that when they uh, suck that in with gusto and confidence, that takes hold. But because the greed factor, because they really, really want to sort of seek out the bait, it means the rig itself 
almost just serves a purpose and that purpose needs to be strong and reliable and the rest usually means a carp in the net. So uh, that's about as good as you're gonna get from me when it comes to technical stuff. I don't change anything apart from the hook every time I catch a fish. So uh, yeah, that's going back out now. And you never know, might be just chance of one more this afternoon. Right, let's go for it. Well, they've turned up like buses today and uh, I can't believe my luck. Two this morning and one late morning. And uh, yeah, he is bristling. I don't think I've seen this one before. I know I keep saying this, but <clears throat> you just have to look at how clean their mouths are to see that these fish just do not get caught. You know, they just very, very rarely get caught. But look at him. He's a lovely one. Oh, look at that. Go and tell your dad I'm on his case. Well, I just got some bait out the freezer because I'm doing the familiar trip up to the park to put some bait in. Uh, but I must admit, the park has changed somewhat over the last couple of weeks since I've had those fish. The weather has broke. And uh, what that means is we've had a bit of wet and stormy weather. You could say biblical for the old carp fishing, but um, there's a better uh, advantage to this weather and that it's keeping the public away. You are not going up now, there's no crazy parties, there's no lilos, there's, uh, there's no um, swimmers, etc. So uh, the park feels very different. And uh, I'm fishing next week and looking at the long-term forecast, it looks like it's gonna be a bit of a wet one, but uh, really looking forward to it. Keeping the bait going in, there's definitely some more feeding activity on the spot. I'm struggling to get the trainers on and talk at the same time, which is never good. But I can't wait to get back up to the crazy park. Or at the moment, because there's no rubbish and no public, the not so crazy park. So uh, until then, I'll sign off, get these shoes on, and hopefully next time I see you, I'll be up at the park. Well, apologies, the wind is whistling around my face. I left home this morning thinking, what am I doing? It has been torrential all morning. But I sat up in the rain and uh, I'm trying to calm my nerves because literally the rods have been out two hours and I've got another one of those big males sat patiently in the net. Cameras don't like rain, so I'm not getting out of this bivvy. In fact, I'm gonna have a cup of tea to calm my nerves and wait for Giles to turn up in his lunch hour to do these pictures because Oh, I'm blown away. I'm absolutely blown away. 42 pounds, four ounces of big male crazy park lake carp. I'm so happy. Oh yes. All the hard work, the dedication, the sacrifices, the things I haven't done at home, the DIY. It all makes it worthwhile when this one comes in the net. I am really happy. Well, it's one last look before I get this incredible purple big male carp back and uh, I'd had a season maker before really with the fish I've caught recently. I would say this is like the cherry on the cake but I've got to make hay while the sun shines and you never know between now and winter it might just get better but I'll struggle to beat this. This is an absolute incredible carp. But all good things come to an end and he's going back. He's clearly been feeding because he's absolutely huge. Everything about him is big. Big pecs, big tail wrist, big male. And this is the reason why these fish have avoided the otters. Because I genuinely think the males are stronger than the females. And uh, the last of the Mohicans lives on. Yes, time to go back. Oh, thank you, mate. Well, apologies, I'm in the car and I've got this lovely orange glow about my face and uh, 
I've got an excited tone in my voice and for very good reason. I've popped into the park this evening to put some bait in and uh, before I even had a chance to flick a few baits out on the area, I was, the intention was to fish in a couple of days time, I've seen the big one, the king of the park, come up off the spot with his dorsal out, chewing baits and going round in a circle around the weed bed and coming back almost for a beeline right back onto the spot again, sinking down like a submarine and a few bubbles ping perk up, um, clearly feeding and then after 10 minutes he comes up again with a couple of other fish this time and doing a circle of the weed bed and then going back down again for another mouthful. I mean that's an opportunity that I cannot miss. So I stayed there until about half past 10. Um, I've come all the way back and I'm gonna grab my rods, my water button, a few bits, and I'm gonna go straight back up now. Um, it's, I, I just don't think it's an opportunity I should let up. Um, I don't wanna wait a couple of days time. That fish is feeding on the spot and if I can get the rods out quietly, I've got a great chance. So uh, I'm not gonna to talk to the camera. I'm gonna get my kit and head straight back up there. Well, my eyesight isn't good at the best of times but it's one o'clock and I just need to get these rods back on the spot I couldn't not come back after seeing what I saw earlier on that big one was definitely on the spot so uh, the baits are on I'm just going to um, hopefully get these out on the spots first cast and get into the bag because I'm absolutely shattered and uh, I'm fishing I'm in the area and I know I feel close not too sure I'm going to sleep very well because the adrenaline's pumping round but if I can get these rods on the spot first cast, I'll be really happy. So yeah, I'll see you in the morning, if not before. Well, I'm really apologetic if this camera's shaky, but today marks the end of my crazy Park Lake journey. And I sit here now on this stage, this board where everyone was jumping off in the summer shaking like a leaf because uh, I've just had a battle and I knew from the very very early stages of that battle what fish it was because it surfaced out in the middle and um, this is uh, this is the pinnacle for me this is the reason I came to the crazy park um, and it couldn't have gone any better I've worked sort of from the bottom up culminating in obviously last week in a fish that uh, would have topped my season but today it's got even better and I have got the one, the king or the queen, whichever one you want to say. He's just in the net, just there. And uh, I'm shaking like a leaf because I'm waiting for uh, a couple of friends to turn up and we'll all get it out together. And uh, I'm gonna celebrate with a beer or two tonight. But in a sad way, this brings me to the end of my journey here and I've loved every single minute of it. So I'm going to sit here, take in the ambience, take in the moment, because these moments don't come along very often. And uh, I could actually shed a tear. That's how happy I am. Oh, but for now, I'm going to turn off because I'm going to save my battery, because I'm hoping the boy's going to do me proud with some pictures. I've left me, uh, my good friend, Dave, on net duty. Do not move from that net. For some reason, I'm slightly paranoid that that one's going to have dolphin abilities and jump out the net. So uh, Dave's doing a grand job, but mate, you know when mates are mates because he's brought me this uh, bottle of champagne to celebrate with and that will not be touched until we sort this fish out and then it's time to celebrate a big carp day. Oh, thanks mate. That's very kind of you. Oh, but we've got to drink it out of cups. Is that right? <laughs> no, uh, no champagne glasses, I'm afraid. Ready? Good. Not on the brake. Ready? 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 Great. Go careful. Eight. Gentle. One. Go. Hang on. Yeah. Wind yourself, Dave. Fuck me. Wind yourself, Dave. Yes, it is. Fucking hell. What is it? Wait. 46. Get square to it, man. Have that. Forty-six-four. What? Seriously? Charlie, you asked me that? Yeah. 
That's forty-six pound well, four. Fucking hell! Yeah. <laughs> hey, if we want, I'll pop them up again, and you can see it. But no, it's mate, forty-six pound four. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wait, cool. off you go, Dave. Get some water back there. And now, stick on his back, Jake. And on his tail, please, and mate. On his tail. Go. Oh, it looks amazing, mate. You want to talk, Mike? I've got you rolling. Charles, I wish I could talk. I'm literally exhausted. Look at the size of it. <laughs> Fucking Mary. Mate, it looks mega. Reminds me of like Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Right. How are we doing, Dave? Yeah, cool. Yeah? Well, happy or do you want some more of this side? I'm happy, mate, if you're happy. Dave? We're up the other side. <laughs> <laughs> happy? We're just rotating. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, it looks mega. Oh my god. <laughs> Fucking mega. Right, that's enough, I reckon. What are you saying? Right, it's time to go back. And um, I am going to celebrate with two bottles of champagne, not all to myself, because Dave and Giles have bought some fizz, the other boys have bought some beers, and uh, that's big carp fishing at its best, I think. But there we are. The king of the pond. Looking absolutely incredible. Time to go Wow! and make somebody else's dream come true one day. Avoid those otters. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that, Giles. He's a big, big male carp, man. Come on. Do your thing. Kick away. Strong. There he is. That was lively. <laughs> Three. Get it down, yeah? Cheers. Get it down, yeah. Well, I'm back where it all began, I guess. At the start of this diary piece, I gave you a bit of an update on uh, this little chap, my best mate, and I'll come to that in a minute because uh, it's only fitting that I maybe end this diary on a bit of an update on this little chap. But the events of the last two weeks have just blown me away. You know, the crazy Park Lake campaign has come to an end. And I must admit, I feel a little bit lost. Anyone that sort of gets involved in a campaign will know you get into a bit of a habit of doing things, the baiting up, the looking, the driving. Um, and when I was fortunate enough to catch that incredible carp, the pinnacle of my campaign, everything just come to an end. That was it, you know? Um, there was no more baiting, there was no more walking, the rods have been put up in the corner of the kitchen there, and uh, yeah, I feel a little bit lost, so, uh, but there's plenty of stuff to be getting on with, and that list of DIY and house chores and things that I've parked for um, to lesser priorities, I would say, in search of a carp or two at the Crazy Park means that I've got a job list now as long as my arm that I need to focus on. So uh, it's always those things you park, isn't it? That uh, things you want to do and things you have to do. And now I'm looking at a list of things I have to do, um, and rightly so, you know, I guess. Uh, you could question whether carp fishing, the obsessive nature, is healthy or not. Um, and I guess I'll let you decide on that one. But um, it's finished. I've had, the, I've had the best of times. I'm going to sincerely miss the crazy park. And to uh, celebrate that capture with all my friends, with no jealousy, and, uh, and handshakes all round, uh, was about as good as it got. That carp is probably up there with the best carp I've ever caught also. But um, yes, I've got a memento on my desk shelf now of that champagne that my friend Dave bought me. I haven't opened it. He's written on the box the date and the capture. And I guess that'll sit there until uh, I feel ready. Or I might even pass the gauntlet on to somebody else if they're fortunate enough to catch that fish in the future. But for the time being, the news about this fella. I couldn't end my diary without giving you an update on this chap because uh, when I first spoke about him, 
Uh, I thought he had a cancerous growth on his foot. But there's some good news, isn't there? Because the vets have done their biopsies and all their tests and it's back and it's not cancerous. And that gives me the best feeling and smart ever. I would have given up all those carp I caught this year for this news and um, it fills me with joy. There's a few more years left in the tank yet, isn't there, mate? So I thought it'd be a fitting end to end my diary on a big thank you. It's been raw at times. Um, there's times when I've handed my cameras to friends that are, let's say, are not professional videographers. They're probably just as excited as I am with a bit of camera shake along the way. But I hope you got to see everything that went on behind the scenes and the dedication that it took maybe to, uh, to succeed. And I guess what I lacked in angling skill, I knew I was always gonna make up in determination. So, uh, and I guess that's it. That's the end. But what a fitting end. I'm gonna take this chap to, um, to the crazy park and I'm gonna give him his, uh, his maiden walk. He hasn't been out for such a long time because of his foot. And I thought, I wanna go back. I'm gonna have one more walk this afternoon. The weather's not great. Just to say thank you and to toast those crazy carp because they really are special fish, the last of the Mohicans. And I wanna bid them farewell because they have to run the gauntlet now um, of otter predation between now and the spring. You know, the winter is when the water, the rivers flood and the otters come into the lakes. And last year, that's when I see most of the otter activity. So I've got my fingers crossed they last another year, but uh, I don't hold out much hope. But in the meantime, we're gonna go for a walk, aren't we? Shall we? Well, I hope you enjoyed the diary and everything in between. And uh, yeah, if you're thinking about your own campaign, give it everything you've got, because you just never know what might happen.